that's quite a uh, quite a story. Uh, Major Zach Fike, who is standing up here so proudly, uh, Vermont National Guard, uh, multiple combat deployments to Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, badly wounded, uh, fighting in the war in terrorism, Purple Heart recipient himself, and he came out to start this effort uh, by himself, backed up by his spouse. We think. A lot of 20 hour a day job. And they were supported by the military order of the Purple Heart with a, with a grant of money to go out there and get these Purple Heart medals back and get them back to the family. So we thank the military order of the Purple Heart also for your support for his effort. Look, my uh, major responsibility and our personal pleasure for me is to introduce our keynote speaker today, Major General Charlie uh, F. Bolden, Jr., uh, Jr., U.S. Marine Corps, retired. And by the way, I told Charlie what I wouldn't do is I went down and gave a, a talk at Quantico to the, uh, the advanced corps down there. I told the commandant, the two-star general running the school, I said, you know how much I wanted to be a Marine, and uh, my wife told me I couldn't be a Marine because she'd never seen me, so I'd have to go in the airborne like her dad. And uh, so when the guy got up to introduce me, he said, you know, he said, you just retired as a force army general. He said, we're really proud you're here. If you joined the Marine Corps, you'd be a retired major today. <laughs> and a proud one at that, if I joined the Marine Corps. Look, Major General Bolden was nominated by the pre uh, President of the United States, Barack Obama, and confirmed by the Senator, uh, U.S. Senate as the 12th Administrator of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA. And he's led that team to advance the mission and goals of U.S. space program brilliantly, diligently, with inadequate resources uh, during his term in office. And we thank him for what he's done for one of the most important scientific and national programs the country runs. He's a Naval Academy grad, class of 1968, commissioned the Marine Second Lieutenant, uh, completed flight training in 1970 and uh, became a naval aviator after that. Uh, from our perspective, we got to remember he flew over a hundred combat missions up north in the big strikes, Laos, Cambodia. So he put his life on the line, 72 and 73, as a Marine combat uh, aviator. His 34-year career with the Marine Corps included 14 years as a member of, astronauts, uh, of the Astronaut Office of NASA. He joined the office in 1980. Listen to this. He was in, uh, joined the uh, travel to orbit four times aboard the space shuttle. Four missions in the space, commanded two of these missions, and piloted the other two. He returned to the Marine Corps, his beloved Marine Corps, for several years before retiring finally from the military, and eventually made his way back to public service in this extremely demanding and complex responsibility. We're proud of our Marine Corps. We're proud of Major General Charlie Bolden. Join me in welcoming him to the podium. Thank you all very much. And um, thank you very much, General McCaffrey. You know, for somebody like me, um, I am humbled. I think it ought to be the other way around. I ought to be introducing General McCaffrey. Uh, so I am incredibly honored to have you uh, bring me to the podium. The other person I want to thank is Jim Knox. Uh, you, talk, you don't meet very many people with his persistence and tenacity. Uh, he has tried to get me to this event for a number of years. Uh, he never gave up, and I am so appreciative that he, that he did not give up. To my fellow Marines who are with us today, um, on the day after we celebrated the 241st anniversary of our Corps yesterday, Semper Fi. <laughs> To all the veterans who are with us, as well as all the active servicemen and women, thank you for your service. To all of you here in the audience, thank you for keeping the memory and the legacy alive of our heroes who are forever a part of this national mall and our national heritage and character. The heroes whose names are inscribed on this wall. There's great symbolism in the fact that we take time today recalling the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918. We recall that time on that day when an armistice or a temporary cessation of hostilities 
was declared between Allied nations and Germany in the First World War, then known as the Great War. These 24 hours of historical observance has become one of the most important days in the life of our democracy. This has become a day when men and women from all walks of life line up in schoolhouses and libraries and senior centers and participate in local parades to celebrate the sacrifices of those who have chosen to serve our nation as members of a unique group of brothers and sisters in arms. As President Obama said in his remarks earlier this afternoon at the Arlington Cemetery, when the world around us would make us cynical, we can always look to the veterans to provide the example for true American spirit. Because of your sacrifices, a few days ago, we were able to exercise one of our most sacred rights, the right to vote, and then exercise the peaceful transition of power, something that sets us apart from almost every other nation in the world. This moving and inspirational wall before which we stand is one symbol and one segment of that unique group of veterans, a group who chose to make the ultimate sacrifice that we might enjoy the unalienable rights of being citizens of these United States. The heroic men and women whose names are inscribed on this wall represent the best of our nation who left their homes in towns, large and small, to take up arms in a far off land that we might continue to live in freedom. They gave their lives so that all of us might continue to live in this freedom. They gave their lives not just for the present, but for the future, for their own children and grandchildren, and for millions of faces they would never see, millions of souls they would never meet, for future generations who would share with them the most sacred and important title anyone can have the privilege to hold, the title of American. Like so many of you, I have far too many friends, far too many brothers and sisters in arms whose names are etched on this wall. These names, more than 58,000 of them, are more than letters carved in stone. Each represents a soul. Each represents someone who was someone else's entire world. They represent husbands and wives, fathers and mothers, sons and daughters, cousins, congregants, best friends, little league coaches, bowling partners, poker buddies, classmates, long lost loves, soulmates, mentors, scoutmasters, deacons, soldiers, sailors, airmen and women, marines, and coast guardsmen and women, heroes all. Each of us has memories etched on this wall. All of our lives have been shaped by the ways in which these heroic men and women impacted our own lives. The poet John, John Greenleaf Whittier writes, and I quote, For all sad words of tongue and pen, the saddest are these, it might have been, unquote. As we mourn for those we lost, we mourn as well for all that might have been, all the contributions they could have made. In this sense, Veterans Day is also a time to celebrate the many contributions that veterans make to our country today. Contributions that benefit our families and communities in every conceivable way. At NASA, we are some of the beneficiaries of veterans' continued service to community and country. So many of our astronauts and other members of our family are veterans and active service members. We are not alone. As I speak today, veterans are continuing to serve the greater good in every corner of our country. 
They are starting businesses and teaching students, training for charity runs and running charities, coaching at boys and girls clubs, and raising boys and girls of their own. They are working as doctors and engineers, and yes, as astronauts and cabinet secretaries and administrators, too. Their service is perhaps the highest tribute of all to the more than 58,000 lives we honor today by our presence at this hallowed wall. Lives that continue to matter today. Souls that we continue to hold dear and forever remain a part of us. May God bless their memory and may God bless our great United States of America. Thank you for those really superb words. But more importantly, thanks to your leadership from the front throughout your lifetime of public service as a Marine flyer and as a space uh, person with NASA. Uh, I'm reminded, by the way, some of you were probably here when we got the first Marine I think we brought down here.